Whereas animal based protein, <clears throat> you are getting cholesterol, you are getting the saturated fat. It's very acidotic in your body, which is not good for someone with kidney disease. It's void of antioxidants. There's no fiber. It has a high uremic waste. The phosphorus is better absorbed. Not to mention that now in the medical, uh, in the um, food industry, they put potassium and phosphorus additives in the meat. And so if you look at, this is just a, a more recent study. So this is a study by Brunori and colleagues. And what they did um, is that they took elderly patients that were 70 years and older with a GFR of five to seven. That is really low. You want the GFR greater than 90. Okay. So these people, most doctors would put these people on dialysis. They followed these people for 26.5 months. They were either put on a low protein vegan diet with acid keto acids or dialysis without a dietary intervention. And the results were that the death rates were not statistically significant between the two groups. So the authors concluded that this diet was safe for postponing dialysis. And so now if we fast forward to KDGO 2024, these are the most recent guidelines. So this is a little bit different than KDOKI. KDGO is global guidelines. So what they say, and I love this, um, avoid high protein intake, just like KDOKI. But also um, for those who are at risk of kidney failure, consider prescribing under close supervision a very low protein diet supplemented with keto, keto acids or essential amino acids. Um, but then listen to this. This is amazing. They said, advise people with chronic kidney disease to adopt healthy and diverse diets with a higher consumption of plant-based foods and use renal dietitians or accredited nutrition providers to educate people with CKD about dietary adaptations regarding sodium, phosphorus, potassium, and protein intake. So not only are they saying that um, you're going to lower the protein intake, but that you are going to use renal dietitians or accredited nutrition providers to educate people. What I just said, we want low protein, we want plant-based proteins, and we want to use dietitians to do it. Okay, <clears throat> now, so that is for someone, what I just said, basically CKD through stage three. Um, for if you are stage four or five, and this is something I would highly recommend you not doing on your own. I would highly recommend using a renal dietitian for this, but you can do very low protein diets supplemented with keto analogs. So, um, it, these keto analogs can be used at any stage and I'm going to explain to you how they work, but they're pretty expensive. And if you're, if you're through stage three, you probably will be fine without them. So what is an amino acid first, before we talk about what a keto analog of amino acid is? An amino acid are molecules that combine together to form protein. They're just the building blocks of our body, the building blocks of protein. And they look like a little chain, just like this. Okay, so we're back in chemistry class. What is a keto analog of amino acid? So remember I told you that amino acids have that nitrogen group on there, right? That you have to remove um, and, and it has to go through the kidneys. So a keto analog of amino acid, if you look at these molecules, these are all keto analogs. There's no in there, right? So it's still an amino acid, but there's no nitrogen there. And so what they do is when, if you have to get on that very low protein diet, the problem with that is you'll become malnourished um, if you don't add something back. So the keto analogs are going to add that protein without creating waste um, but also here's what's so interesting since they're missing that nitrogen, you're still going to be eating some protein. You'll never eat a diet void of protein. Um, and you're still going to have that protein breakdown inside the body. So what these keto analogs will do is when your body cuts off that in off those amino acids, these keto analogs will pick that up. So they scavenge the nitrogen from the breakdown of other proteins Again, lessening the load even further on your kidneys. Okay, <clears throat> so, so we've just been talking about protein in the blood, protein in the diet. And you may be thinking, well, my doctor told me I had protein in my urine. What does that mean? Okay, <clears throat> this is never normal. Sometimes doctors will say, oh, it's not that much. Um, 
protein in the urine is never normal. If you have kidney disease and your urine looks like the picture on the left with the bubbles, you may have protein in your urine unless you just cleaned your toilet. Um, it is a marker of kidney damage. Okay, so if, if someone is spilling a lot of protein, it tells us how fast the kidneys are progressing. Um, so it does uh, correlate with disease progression, but it's also intrinsic to renal toxicity. So it's, it's um, proteinuria is toxic. Protein coming through the kidneys is toxic to the kidneys. It can cause scarring. Um, and it's caused by um, a loss of selectivity of the glomerular barrier. I'm going to tell you what that is. We talked about the glomerulus, right? Um, that is the functional unit of the kidney. There's a picture of it here on the left, which I think is just fascinating. On the right, it's showing us the glomerular barrier, okay? So in your kidneys, you have this barrier there in the glomerulus. Now, a nephrologist, um, well, let me tell you this first. So it's got it's got three layers. This outer layer is called the podocyte, and it's kind of like, they say it's a foot process. I think it's more like a octopus that kind of wraps around and tightens that barrier. Okay. But at, if you damaged your kidneys, that barrier can be open. I'm hoping y'all are seeing my hands right now and there can be holes there. So this is a nephrologist gave me this picture one time, which I thought was pretty perfect. If you have grapes and you're rinsing the grapes in a colander, right? And, but you damaged that call. Say the colander got damaged in your washing machine and some of those holes got bigger. The grapes are not supposed to come through the colander. But if the holes are bigger, the grapes will come through the colander. That's what's happening with protein. The holes in your glomerular barrier are too big and the protein is coming through. And so this one, you'll just see, this is another picture of the glomerulus. And see, if you see the little light brown part, that is that barrier. You don't want holes there because if you have holes there, then the protein is coming through the kidneys. Now, why do we care about proteinuria? Um, because it causes, like I said, inflammation in your kidneys. It causes scarring in the kidneys. Um, heavy proteinuria leads to interstitial fibrosis, inflammation. So keep that word in your head because I'm going to be coming back to inflammation. Everything with kidney disease is cyclical. So a lot of things you're going to see me circling back on. I'm going to circle back on inflammation. Um, oxidative stress, I'm going to circle back on that. Eating more protein and animal protein makes proteinuria worse. Um, people, a lot of times people with proteinuria will have a, like a, what we call a low albumin level. Eating more protein is not going to fix that. Um, slow in progression of kidney disease and lowering inflammation fixes that. Now, this is another thing I have in, in the second book. It's called the heat map. <clears throat> you should know where you fall on the heat map because this is going to tell you how severe your kidney disease is, how fast it's progressing, um, and so if you see here, this, it also tells us how important proteinuria is. Um, because if you see over here, like the GFR at 3A, so if you go down the left side, you'll see G1, G2, G3, 3A, um, that's the stage of kidney disease. So that's a GFR 45 or 59. So you could look at your labs and you could say, what is my GFR? Oh, it's 45 to 59. What well, am I spilling protein? And you can look and see how much protein. So if you have greater than 300 milligrams of protein in your urine or three grams, it's usually in grams with the doctor, um, you're in the red. That means your kidney disease is, is progressing fast. So the proteinuria really tells us how fast we're going in kidney disease. Um, so you should, you should know your labs better than anybody else knows your labs. You should know your kidney function better than anyone else and be your own advocate. Know where you fall on this heat map. Okay, so that's protein. Now let's move to acid-base balance. So why do we care about acid-base balance? So kidneys maintain acid-base balance. Your lungs and your, you know, they do a little bit too, but the kidneys are the main um, organ system in your body that maintains acid-base balance. So um, solutions with a higher number of hydrogen ions are more acidic. And bicarbonate acts as an opponent of acids and works as a buffer for the acidic, acidotic nature of your body. And so the kidneys secrete hydrogen ions in the urine and reabsorb bicarbonate back. That's how they manage this acid-base balance. Now, acid-base balance is usually okay until the GFR gets to be about 40 or 50, which is late st stage 3A or worse. So with acidosis, 
pre-dialysis, you're going to use a plant-based diet. There's nothing better. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, if, if somebody's eating a complete plant-based diet with lots of um, fruits and vegetables, and they're still a little bit on the acid side, um, which is usually happens in late stage kidney disease, then we can add a little bit of baking soda to some water every day. Um, just a simple solution to that. Dialysis, this is managed with um, bicarbonate in the, in the dialysis machine because the kidneys at that point have completely failed. So it tells you how important acid-based balance is. Um, and so the reason that you really care, the reason this is important is because there are lots of clinical problems with this. So it causes a degradation of muscle protein, muscle wasting. Nobody wants that, especially as we age destruction of bone. You certainly don't want that because there's also other mechanisms going on with kidney disease um, that can cause what we call metabolic bone disease. So you really, really need to protect your bones if you have kidney damage. Um, decreased albumin synthesis. So again, this is a lot of times people want to place like that you need to eat more protein to raise albumin. No, you need to lower inflammation. You need to get more alkaline. That will bring that albumin back up. Um, it causes an increased rate of chronic kidney disease. We're trying to preserve your kidneys and you're trying to keep you off the dialysis machine. Um, <clears throat> it stimulates inflammation and um, impaired insulin secretion. And so <clears throat> will pre-ESRD, does lowering acid slow progression? Um, so yes, protein, particularly animal protein, is the principal source of acid generation in the body. Um and so when the kidney is damaged with, is challenged with this acid from eating an animal-based diet, increases levels of certain hormones, angiotensin 2, aldosterone, endothelin. Endothelin is directly correlated with inflammation, which we're going to see later. I'm going to be circling back when I get to acidosis. I'm going to circle. I mean, when I get to inflammation, I'm circling back to acid-based balance. So just sort of keep these things in your head. Um, angiotensin 2 and aldosterone, if, if you're on like an ACE inhibitor or an angiotensin receptor blocker, that's to stop that, that, uh, it's called the renal angiotensin aldosterone system. It's to stop that, that to protect the kidneys. Well, keeping an alkaline body also does that. Um, short term, those three hormones will help with acid secretion, but long term, they're going to worsen kidney function, which we don't want. That's why you take medicines to lower those things. Um, <clears throat> so what can we do? So simple, just increase fruits and vegetables, decrease animal protein. And, and then, like I said, as a last resort, um, add baking soda. OK, so why? Why are fruits and vegetables so important? Well, there's this concept called potential renal acid load. Um, diet is the most important factor that leads to acid base balance. Potential renal acid load. All that is is just it indicates the acid forming potential of certain foods um, or the base performing potential. And so it's not what the food is outside the body. Like a lemon is very acid outside the body, but inside the body, it's very alkaline. So if you see here, you want a low number, you want a low acid load coming from these foods, right? So if you look at fruits and vegetables, they have a negative number. And then as you start getting into the animal protein, you see that this number goes up. That's because those foods are very acidotic. They're making your kidneys have to work harder. Remember, the kidneys have to get rid of the hydrogen ions, increase the bicarbonate. And when you're eating these animal foods, it's making that harder. We don't want them to work harder. We want them to work less. We're trying to preserve their function. And so if you look at diet and acidosis, um, plants and acidosis are Fruits and vegetables are naturally alkalizing. Um, meat is naturally acid forming. Um, <clears throat> and so the endogenous acid production depends largely on the type of protein intake. Low protein, high fruit and vegetable intake has the lowest net endogenous production. And so if you, um, there was a study that uh, was done. This is pretty interesting. It was a study done um, on um, chronic kidney disease stage two, which is pretty early in, in the kidney disease. But um, they looked at whether adding sodium bicarbonate or just increasing the fruits and vegetables in the diet um, worked better for bringing somebody into more alkaline state. And what they found was that um, the results showed that not only were the patient's bodies more alkaline on just the fruits and vegetables, um, but that the indicators of kidney injury were actually lower in the fruits and vegetable group. So remember, we are, we're doing a lot of things with this diet. It's, it's a whole person concept.